Hey there, have you ever wondered how a credit score really works? What factors make up your credit score and what is a good credit score? Hey guys, I'm Chris Peach from moneypeach.com and 1AZ Credit Union and I help people create a budget, save more money and get out of debt. But in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the five different categories there are that make up your credit score. We're gonna talk about how they're weighted a little bit differently and then we're also gonna talk about what is an actual good credit score. Now it's important to go back about 30 years when the credit score was kind of developed. You see a company called the Fair Isaac Corporation or FICO got together and they decided we have to create a standardized system so lenders and borrowers are on the same page when it comes to a scoring criteria based on how good you are at borrowing money and paying it back on time. So, and hence you've got the FICO score. Now the FICO score is made up of five different categories. We're gonna talk about each of those categories right now. Now we're gonna start with the most important category there is, and that is your payment history. It makes up 35% of your credit score. Now think about this. If you're gonna loan a friend money, wouldn't you wanna know the history they have of borrowing money and paying it back? Well, especially, what if you didn't know the person? Well, that's how FICO score works. 35% is based on payment history because lenders need to know, are you good at paying off debt on time? Also, did you know a missed payment will stay on your credit report, get this, for seven years? Payment history makes up the largest portion of your credit score, so it's so important that you make those payments on time. Now the second most important part of your credit score makes up 30% of your credit score and that is the amounts owed. So what do I mean by amounts owed? Well, it's your credit utilization limit. Basically what that means is how much credit do you have available and how much are you using? So let's give an example of this. Let's say you have a credit card with a $10,000 limit, but you have a $2,000 balance. That means 20% is being used or a 20% credit utilization limit. Now this only applies to revolving debt. So think of like open debt, credit card debt, maybe a home equity line of credit or a gas station card, things that don't close. The opposite of that would be an installment loan. Those are like mortgages, car payments, student loans, and stuff like that. But we're talking about the credit utilization or the amounts owed is gonna be based on your revolving credit. Now a good rule of thumb according to the FICO people is you wanna keep that below 30 However, FICO also gives us a little bit more information saying that those with a really good score of 780 or higher have a credit utilization ratio of just 7%. The bottom line is, the lower your credit utilization, the more trustworthy you're going to be to loan money to and therefore your score will increase. The third factor when it comes to your credit score is the length of credit history. Now this makes up 15% of your credit score. Now when they're looking at the length of credit history, they're looking at three things. The first thing is, how old is your oldest account? Second is, how old is your newest account? And third, what is the average age of all of your accounts put together? It's important to note though that this only makes up 15% of your credit score. 65% of your credit score is based on those first two things, amounts owed and payment history. A lot of times I'll hear people think, I need to go close an account or I need to open an account. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but just know length of your credit history makes up 15% of your credit score. Now moving on, we're going down a little bit further. 10% of your credit score is based on credit mix. So what do I mean by credit mix? Well, a lender wants to know not only how good are you at borrowing money, but how good are you at borrowing a mixture of different types of loans. So maybe it's a credit card or a student loan or a mortgage or an auto loan, whatever it might be, a credit mix just allows lenders to see a little bit more data on you and allows them to know, are you good at borrowing different types of money? Again, it's only 10% of your score. It's not as important as payment history or the amounts owed. Now lastly, rounding in the last 10% is going to be new credit. So anytime you get new credit, it could increase your score or it could decrease your score. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, think about this. If I open up a new account, there's a thing called a hard inquiry, which is also pulling your credit. And we all know from being around long enough that pulling your credit or a hard inquiry is going to decrease your score a little bit. Also, it's gonna decrease your credit history because you just added in new credit but can also improve your credit because you're, you might be adding a new credit mix in there. Maybe you didn't have this type of loan and you added that in. But remember, the majority of your credit score, 65% of it is based on those first two categories, payment history and credit utilization. That's the most important part. The other parts are important, but they're weighted much differently. So now that we know the five categories that break down a credit score, you might be asking yourself, so what actually is a good credit score? Now, as you can see from this graph I have on the screen right now, a credit score ranges from 300 to a perfect score of 850. 
And in fact, 67% of Americans have a good credit score or a score of 670 or higher. So the bottom line is you have to ask yourself, is a credit score worth it? In my opinion, the answer is yes. And here's why. A better credit score is going to get you a better interest rate and interest rates do matter. Let me give you an example here. Let's say you go get a mortgage for $350,000 on a 30 year loan. Now, if you get an interest rate 3% or 4%, that difference right there of 1% over the life of the loan adds up to over $70,000 in interest. As you can see, interest rates matter and your credit score is directly related to the interest rate you will receive. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you found value in this video, please do us a favor, give us a like, a comment, and share this with a friend who might need to know what you just learned about the credit score. And lastly, this video is brought to you by 1AZ Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union when it comes to helping you become better with your money. And if you're not part of the 1AZ CU family, I would highly encourage you to go to 1AZCU.com or drop into any of our 20 branches across the state of Arizona. You see there's a huge difference out there. Credit unions, they exist to take care of their members. Whereas a bank, they exist to take care of their investors. When you join a local credit union, you become a member of that credit union. And instead of the money leaving the state of Arizona, it stays right here in the local community. I highly encourage you to check out 1AZCU.com or go and visit any of our 20 branches across the state of Arizona and join me being a member at 1AZ Credit Union. Thanks so much for watching guys, take care.